Hi guys, Tom Hunt here in the kit room. Uh, very, very chilly this evening. I think we're gonna have quite a harsh frost tonight. Uh, and with that in mind, we've got some pike questions that we're gonna cover. So today's subject is gonna be covering the age old debate between wire versus fluorocarbon. Okay, so first of all, there's a few, probably a few different ways that I can attack this subject. Uh, the first one is really gonna be about uh, maybe a little bit sort of moral uh, or, or, or cultural, should I say. V various different places have different views on it. So we'll cover that to start with. And then I think secondly, we'll actually cover the technical details of, of what, what do I use, when do I use it, and what, what do I think is, is better. So first of all, let's kind of cover the, the moral sort of outlook. Uh, here in the UK, I've got a lot of viewers now from Slovakia and Belgium and Sweden. I uh, get messages quite a lot. So, um, so I'm quite apparent that this is going out beyond the UK, but just for you guys, give you a bit of insight. Here in the UK, uh, fluorocarbon is very, very frowned upon. Um, you know, the age old pike and predator anglers have always said, uh, wire is the only option. Now, I think that might be for a few different reasons. I think, first of all, obviously, fluorocarbon comes in every size from three pound up to, you know, a couple of hundred pound. And so when we're talking about fluorocarbon, I think there needs to be a bit of an understanding about what sort of size and what sort of diameter. And then there also needs to be a bit more of an understanding about, um, you know, what other people do in other countries and, and on the continent. So I'll kind of lay it out like this. Um, I've fished, you know, uh, all over Europe, uh, pike fishing. I've traveled, I've done a lot of pike fishing in Denmark, a little bit in Norway. Uh, yeah, uh, all across Europe really. And, and it is really interesting that in certain countries that you go to, they basically don't even sell wire or it's not even sort of possible to buy it. You know, their, their kind of only go-to is using thick fluorocarbon traces. Over here in the UK, we have had people say, oh, I got bitten off even on thick fluorocarbon before, uh, so I'll never use it again. And, and if you care about pike, you should only ever use wire. Um, you know, there's obviously a debate to be had. So this is the way that I think about it. Um, when you have a thick fluorocarbon, let's, for example, say that we're taking someone from Sweden or Denmark who uses this day in, day out, year in, year out. Culturally, that's the material that they use. So let's, for example, say that we're going to take a, a one millimeter thick fluorocarbon. This is a fluorocarbon that they use all the time. They're totally confident in um, and they don't they don't feel that there's there's a huge risk. Some people over there have never been bitten off. And so the ability for you to be bitten off, for example, um, obviously represents what I'm going to classify as a failure rate. OK, um, now, when we talk about failure rate and when we talk about risk, we really need to try and introduce kind of some numbers and think about it a little bit mathematically. So. This is more a case of how I think about it rather than what my actual experience or specifics are. But for example, you know, for example, say that there's some people over in Scandinavia, maybe they get bitten off one, one in a thousand pike, for example. That's just, I've totally plucked that out of the air. But let's, for example, say one in a thousand pike bites them off. So they have a failure rate of one in a thousand due to the material that they're using. Um, so the guys that say that that they're never going to use fluorocarbon because they've been bitten off in the past and they're only going to use wire. Now, wire also has, to some degree, a failure rate. OK, so when we look at the different materials, for example, you might get bitten off on a fluorocarbon, but you're... I, I would say virtually never, you must be up into the one in ten thousands, you're never going to get you're never going to crack off, for example, because the, the fluorocarbon is too brittle. But that can happen with wire. You know, wire can damage in a certain way. It can fray. Um, it can, I've certainly had this in the past. If you use crimps, uh, it, it's possible for the crimps to slip. So really, when it comes down to the kind of cultural debate here in the UK, 
I really think it's kind of six and two threes. You'll always get some people say, I only ever use fluorocarbon, and you'll get other people say, I only ever use wire. But I just wanna try and pass across to you guys that, that really I think um, as long as you're using, and so this is my recommendation, 0.9 of a millimeter for your fluorocarbon uh, for pike traces is the minimum that you want to go. I've spoken to plenty of top, top pike anglers all across Europe, and that really is kind of the minimum that they'll go to. Um, any less than that, and you, you probably are risking um, your, your failure rate to, to be creeping up into some higher numbers, all right, which no one really wants to do. But let's, let's just be honest that, that both fluorocarbon and wire at times can have failure rates. I certainly know I've tried single st strand titanium before. It can become really brittle. Uh, I've had uh, a crimps slip uh, when I've made my own traces. And again, how many traces have I made? Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. And even the ones that I am you know, super happy with, crimps that I've used forever, never had any problems before, then suddenly you just get a crimp that slips, all right? So there is a failure rate, um, but, but I would like to think that once you're over 0.9 of a millimeter, with your fluorocarbon, your failure rate should be very low, just as much as a very low failure rate if you're using wire, okay? That, that you've made a trace that yourself and you're really happy with, um, and you check as often as you can, that type of thing. But, but mishaps happen, pike, can end up for whatever reason with, um, you know, unfortunately with a lure in their mouth. Um, but to start with, my view is that there's no better or worse between fluorocarbon and, and wire. But there's a lot of guys out there, particularly in the UK, who absolutely demonise um, fluorocarbon. Moving on to a little bit more about like well, they've got different properties and to start with we're already talking about a minimum diameter of close to one millimeter which is pretty thick when you get it in your hands um, they have completely different properties and ways that they present a look so here's a little bit around my kind of thinking about when and where i would use either um, if i'm totally honest i use uh, wire probably 90 percent of the time it fits with my fishing, I'm confident with it, I tie my own traces, um, I just, I don't see a problem with it, I don't see it affects my catch rate a huge amount, um, and more importantly, there's one particular reason, uh, due to diameter and presentation, that I, I do prefer wire. But on, on, on occasions, in super crystal clear water, um, to a certain degree, when I actually go abroad, it's almost a little bit like when in Rome, you know, do as the Romans do. So I do, I try uh, uh, fluorocarbon a little bit more over there because it's what they do and it's what works for them. And so I'm kind of tuning in a little bit more to it. Um, the one thing that I prefer about wire is the thinness of the diameter. Uh, really, I think in the UK, nine times out of 10 these days on the big reservoirs that I'm targeting, big pike, um, less so on rivers. I don't do a load of, of sort of big pike fishing on rivers, but the big reservoirs um, is real my mainstay of my pike fishing. I really feel like more and more lately, the fishing pressure goes up and we're really having to be a little bit cuter and a little bit more subtle with our presentation. And the thinness of wire, allows me to fish much smaller jig heads because there's much less resistance on the line. Um, it's allow, it's, mu it's much more direct as well. If I'm fishing anything sub sort of six, eight, maybe 10 foot, six or eight foot, I think fluorocarbon might have an advantage if you're actually wanting to keep it up in the water. But as soon as you start getting over 10 foot, I really feel in these pressured waters that we've got in the UK, a lot of the time, those pike are sitting much, much lower to the bottom. They've seen it all before. I'm tending to fish smaller lures, lighter jig heads. And although wire is more visible in terms of the way that I can present a lure with the thinness of it, that for me it is the biggest benefit. You know, once you're starting to get over 10 or 15 or towards 20 foot deep, I really feel like a very thick fluorocarbon is is meaning that I'm having to fish very, very slow or 
uh, you know, to keep that lure down or I'm having to fish um, much, much bigger jig heads in order to keep that, that lure closer to the deck where I feel like I'm gonna get a, a bite from a pike. Um, there are days, of course, when those pike are gonna be active they're going to be suspended. They're going to the further they come off the bottom, generally the more aggressive they are. Um, but yeah, the fluorocarbon for me it just doesn't work. And I do a lot of pike fishing in these reservoirs in that kind of ten or twelve to about twenty foot range. Rutland, Grafham, um, Chew Valley, less so. It's a shallow water. Um, you know, looking for sort of eight to fourteen foot there. But, but it's particularly Rutland I spent a lot of time on, uh, Pittsford as well. You know, these are reservoirs that I'm catching a lot in sort of over 15 foot deep. So for me, I like the finer presentation, a little bit more cute presentation, uh, and it allows me to fish smaller jig heads. Um, however, when you've got crystal clear water, the visibility of those wire traces, I've played around with a few different wires as well. Um, if I'm honest, uh, there is a knottable wire by Fulling Mill, which is coming in at about 26 pound breaking strain, which for me is the right diameter to strength uh, and the right type of material. It's nice and soft. It doesn't kink too badly. It will kink. Um, but I've, I've been experimenting a little bit more with titanium, but the titanium ones that I've found are a little bit more springy a lot darker in colour. They're almost like a jet black in colour, whereas some of the other knottable wires that I'm using are a little bit more subtle in that kind of light brown, slightly golden, you know, uh, a slightly copperish sort of colour. Um, so I'm not completely sold on titanium in terms of the visuals of it. The one thing that I am really sold on with titanium is, is the longevity of it. Man alive, you can't bend, twist, cr you know, nick uh, uh like it just doesn't it doesn't kink at all you know so you can if you look after them properly you can get blimey you could get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pike out of the same trace whereas with a lot of these knottable wires yes they're cheaper but yeah i'm finding i'm sort of changing lures probably every sometimes one but between one and every five fish really um Coming on to kind of fluorocarbon, when does it have advantages? Like I just mentioned, super clear water. You know, you don't have the visuals of a wire trace. Um, so it, it could be a, an added benefit there because the refractive index of fluorocarbon is very, very similar to water, which makes it not completely invisible, but almost invisible. Um, however, you know, there is an argument to be said, and I've thought about this a lot in the past, which is, you know, a lot of the... the the lures that we're using have got size six, four, two trebles, you know, large treble hooks. Are they really visually picking up on a 0.4 mil wire trace, but not picking up on a size two set, two sets of size two trebles? I don't really know. Um, I've seen a lot of pike behaviour underwater and I do think that they investigate lures a little bit more. But for me, um, that one, the jury's still kind of out on that slightly in terms of the invisibility. But I think with confidence, at the very least, if you're, if you're retrieving and you're feeling like there's, it's a little bit sticking out like a sore thumb with a wire trace that could be, you know, that's quite, especially if you're fishing very slow, if you're fishing with a good pace on, I don't think it matters so much because I think you're looking much more of a reaction bite, bite and any of those pike that are going to strike, they haven't really got time to look at the lure. So particularly with, you know, those fast methods like probably crankbaits, spinnerbaits, spinnerbaits in particular because they don't look, they don't look like anything. There's nothing realistic about them at all. So I think you have to fish them quick. I think if you let those pike in any sort of clear water, get a good look at it. I think a lot of the time they're going to abort or they're going to follow or they're just yeah going to have a quick look and then they're going to drift off. You have to fish them with pace and try and create a reaction strike. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're in those clear water. It, you know, if you're fishing slow, maybe it's just a confidence thing. And I would consider fluorocarbon a little bit more. 
But I also think fluorocarbon uh, has its benefits as well because it is thicker and it is stiffer. So like I said, if I'm trying to fish a little bit closer to the bottom in that kind of depth of water when I'm 12 to sort of 20 plus foot deep, um, I feel wires better. When I'm fishing shallow and I might be over the top of weeds, for example, I might actually want to use that trace material, that one millimeter thick fluorocarbon to actually keep that lure up off the deck to stop it from sinking, you know, to stop that resistance. Um, you know, as it's falling through the water, a larger diameter is going to create a much, much slower fall. So that's certainly one scenario that I would consider using fluorocarbon if I wanted to keep it much shallower. And also, you know, consider jerkbait fishing as well. Uh, there's um, uh, typically I would go more with a wire because, well, it depends on the presentation really, but the way that I like to try and fish uh, uh, jerk baits is a little bit quicker and a little bit more kind of aggressive. If I'm fishing them on the hang, I think you could get away with um, get away with fluorocarbon because you have to you have to think about the resistance. The, the main difference for me is visuals yes but the diameter you know and that very thick fluorocarbon on a jerk bait that you're trying to work and you're trying to make it work left and right now if you're looking for maximum movement in that jerk bait so something like the westin swim for example yes you can use fluorocarbon but it's going to dull the action so when you hit that lure it's going to want to go left yeah, and then you hit it again, it's gonna to want to go right, but it's actually being slowed down because that thicker diameter fluorocarbon is gonna slow it down. Now that might be absolutely fine if that's what you're looking for, but generally I'm looking for maximum movement out of my um, out of my uh, jerk baits. So, you know, wire, that thinner wire is gonna come cut through the water like a cheese wire, a little bit better. And it's also, you know, it's gonna allow those uh, a jerk baits to really glide, you know, those glide baits and swim baits to, to move maximum movement left and right. Um, yeah, I probably, the last thing I'd say again is when people are using super thin wire, people have said in the past that it can, you know, if, a cr if the pipe does a crocodile roll, it can damage them. Fluorocarbon obviously is much thicker, so it's got less, less chance of damaging or pulling scales off. To be honest, I don't really see that a huge amount in my fishing. Like I said, I probably fish uh, uh, wire 90 plus percent of the time in most of my pike fishing. So I don't really, uh, you know, I'm not getting pike in the net and thinking, oh, blimey, I've, you know, I've ca caused a laceration or a cut or I've removed a load of scales. I don't really feel that happens a huge amount. But I know some people are, are quite, um, quite, you know, uh, uh, they're aware of that, let's put it. Um, so yeah, there we go, guys. Um, obviously, there's cultural differences. In terms of failure rate, I don't think there's a huge difference. In terms of presentation, I do think there's a huge difference. If I'm fishing deeper or I want to fish lighter or a little bit more finesse for pike, I tend to use wire because it's much thinner. If, I'm, if I use fluorocarbon, it tends to be abroad or it tends to be if I'm wanting to fish a little bit shallower, keep that lure up off the deck. Um, yeah, and, and in super clear water, I think it can give you a little bit of extra, uh, uh, you know, bit of extra confidence as well. So there we go, guys. That's my thoughts on um, wire versus fluorocarbon. I know it's a massive, massive debate over here in the UK. It has been for years. Uh, every time it pops up on any of the Facebook pages, there's always a hundred comments deep on people saying the pros and cons of it uh, uh, over in, over in uh, Europe, over in yeah, like I said, Denmark, Holland, Sweden, Norway. Uh, I don't even think they have the debate a huge amount. I just think that they use they use fluorocarbon nine times out of ten and ninety nine times out of a hundred probably, uh, and they never really think about it a huge amount. So um, yeah, it's interesting. It certainly opens your eyes when you get into those different cultures and, and start to see how they use how they use different materials and what confidence they've got. Um, so yeah, but um, yeah, there you go, guys. That's my thoughts. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. So pop it in the comments below. Have you ever been bitten off on, on or what's the biggest diameter you've ever been bitten off on? Have you been bitten off on one millimeter before or 0.9 millimeters? What do you think the failure rate is of each of fluorocarbon versus wire? Uh, love to hear your thoughts. And as always, guys, if you've got any questions, pop them in the, in the comments below and I'll always try and get, um, 
always try and make a video for you. Uh, I actually really, really enjoy. I've had a few people say, oh, why do you bother making these videos? It's very nice of you, but you're not getting paid, etc. Um, it's actually really, uh, first of all, I just love helping lure anglers. Second of all, it's actually very, very beneficial for me because every time a subject comes up or a question comes up, it makes my angling brain think that, you know, I have to articulate an answer and I have to streamline my answers uh, uh, in my own head before I can try and pass them across to you guys. And, and that's really important. That really helps me with my fishing. It really gets me thinking stuff that might not come up that often, but other people might be struggling with. And I'll start wondering about, you know, why something works or doesn't work or how to help people. And yeah, I just, I, we all just love chatting fishing. Uh, and I love thinking about it too and trying to solve that puzzle. So I'm always happy to try and help solve your puzzles if you're struggling at any point. Don't know it all, but I can always try and help. But um, yeah, over and out guys. Uh, yeah, we'll finish up on that and I'll see you on the next one.